What up, dude bros? I'm Frank. This is another series overview. This one is on the Elite series. Heavily requested video. This one's gonna be a modified format to try to condense each blaster summary. If I went into the full summary of each Elite Blaster, because there are so many, this one would be like a three hour video. So sit back, maybe pop some popcorn. Here's an Elite series overview. BT Dubs, table of contents in the description of this video so you can jump around to a particular element. But to start this one, we really have to define what is the Elite series. Because sometimes the Mega Blasters are labeled as Elite Mega, as if Mega is a subseries of Elite, but it's not always. And Strike is listed as a subseries of Elite, but kinda sorta, not always. On that note, AccuStrike is all over the place. Now they have AccuStrike Mega, AccuStrike Rebel, AccuStrike like Elite or the normal AccuStrike. Shoot, I'll probably just make a separate video on the hierarchy of all of these weird series labels. I'm gonna think of it, that would be a fun video. Boom, let's do it. But for this video, we're focusing primarily on the blue Elite Blasters. That's kind of what most people would think of when you say Elite Blaster. But even using that definition, like the Elite Long Shot is, I would call it the Elite Long Shot because it's the new one, it's blue, it comes with actual Elite darts, but it's not an Elite Blaster officially. It's not labeled that way on the box, and it certainly doesn't have Elite performance. The chrono velocity is like 55, 56 FPS, pretty low. So super flexible definition of Elite. Let's get into it. Unfortunately, I don't own all of these blasters, so my B-roll archive isn't complete. So stock photos will have to suffice for some, including the first one, the Stockade. Stockade is flywheel powered, fed through a 10 round built-in cylinder, and has a pretty small overall profile. Interestingly, this has an on-off switch, not a rev trigger. Not technically good or bad, it's just different. That's not really my style, I prefer the rev trigger. But it was definitely early in the use of flywheel blasters out of nerf. Next, we have the Glorious Strife. This one comes in blue and orange, and now also white, but that's the Modulus blaster, which Modulus is not elite. The Strife is also flywheel powered and includes a six round magazine, but of course it's compatible with all in-strike mags. And the Strife is semi-automatic with a mechanical trigger system. Pretty small profile and low cost. You can add whatever stock or barrel or attachments you want, but it doesn't include any of those. Strife is still probably my favorite blaster. The Nemesis is my favorite, like best blaster for sure, but it's not really my favorite favorite. The Strife will always hold a special place in my heart or my synthetic robot heart since I don't have a real one. <laughs> Next is the Elite Raven and also the Raven 5 because they're pretty much the same blaster. The Raven is very similar to the Strife with a slightly different format because it's a bullpup. Bullpup just means the magazine is fed behind the trigger system, but it also uses a mechanical semi-automatic feeding system. No stock attachment point because it's a bullpup format, but you can put on barrel attachments, side rail, as, as well as a top rail. And the Blue Raven instead of the Raven Fire includes an 18 round glow magazine, so it has glow in the dark darts because tracer rounds are a uh, operator status. Next, the Nerf Cam, which is also very similar to the Strife. All of these semi-auto flywheel blasters that I'm going over are effectively the same drivetrains in the sense that they use mechanical semi-auto triggers with flywheels and the wiring harnesses are pretty much the same. But the Nerf Cam has different ergonomics. You cannot attach a front barrel or a stock because they're effectively built into the blaster, but you can still attach some tactical stuff to the rails. And the Nerf Cam, implied in the name, comes with a camera that is built into the unit so you can record your gameplay. Footage is pretty low resolution, not really worth it, but the profile of this blaster is pretty cool. And of course, that's fed through the in-strike magazines. It's compatible with all mags, but included is a 12-round stick mag. Next blaster is the Hailfire. Now, it's similar and also quite different than the other three flywheelers. It has the same feeding system, so it's semi-automatic and you'll yield pretty much the same performance, but it has eight magazine slots. So you can be ready to fire, you know, magazine after magazine and fill up the other magazines while you still have one or actually seven magazines still loaded in the blaster. So crazy high rate of fire, certainly not a traditional blaster, like how you hold it and handle it, but if that's your play style, uh, that's a lot of firepower. Pew pew. Next, the Demolisher. Now this one's pretty much the same as the Raven, Strife, and Nerf Cam in the primary section of the blaster because it's a flywheel semi-automatic blaster fed through a mechanical trigger. And it's fed with magazines. It includes a 10 round banana magazine and it's compatible with other in-strike mags. But on the front of the Demolisher, you have a missile launcher, which is pretty cool. The propulsion is interesting. You don't pump it up and release it like with a trigger or anything. You just pull the handle forward and jerk it back to fire, which is pretty cool. It's pretty much an integration right out of the box and it's built in. That is the Demolisher the last semi-automatic flywheel blaster I'm covering in this video. Next, the Rapid Strike. The Rapid Strike is fully automatic, fed off of an electronic trigger system, which varies from the mechanical semi-auto trigger systems, which were just covered, in the sense that there's a very small delay from when you pull the trigger and when you're able to fire. The mechanical trigger is a little smoother or faster, but the electronic trigger allows you to go fully automatic because it's going by itself. The Rapid Strike can accept front barrel extensions, but the stock is built in, so you can't add a different stock. But it has rails on both sides, as well as the top and bottom, so rails all over the place for 
for all your tactics. And included with the Rapid Strike is an 18 round stick mag that's clear. And I have a bunch of these and I really like them and they're pretty popular because you're able to see the capacity and also what type of darts you loaded if you used slightly different darts like waffle heads and normal elites and whatever. Being clear instead of opaque or even the transparent orange, which are a little foggier than the clear, allows you to see what type of ammo you have very quickly and also your capacity. If you're firing, you can just glance down. You don't really need an ammo counter. You can just look. And as I've mentioned many times, the 18 round stick bags are my personal favorite magazine because when you put them into gear, you can store a bunch of them on your body. So it's the sweet spot for me and my body type and how I carry gear for the most capacity of the blaster with the streamlined gear. And that is the Rapid Strike. Next is the Hyper Fire, which some people view as the upgraded Rapid Strike or the successor because it's very similar. It's also a fully automatic flywheel powered blaster that's also magazine fed, but the Hyper Fire comes with a 25 round drum magazine. Now the feeding system in the Hyper Fire is a little different than the Rapid Strike. It feeds with a conveyor belt. It's also an electronic trigger system, so you still have that small delay over like a mechanical semi-auto trigger. And the ergonomics of the Hyper Fire are untraditional. Some people really like them. I personally prefer the, the feel and the weight balance of the Rapid Strike over the Hyper Fire, but I personally just don't really like thumbhole stocks. They aren't my style. And the last flywheeler, the Rhino Fire, which is more or less two Rapid Strikes, two Hyper Fires glued together because there are two magazine ports and two firing mechanisms that fire fully automatic together. It includes two 25 round drums, making the capacity 50 rounds. So it's 50 rounds full auto with one trigger and you go pew, 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 and it shoots two lanes of foam. It's a rather large blaster and it also runs on 6D alkaline batteries. So it's a pretty heavy blaster as well, but included is a tripod. So you can kind of balance it up on, in a corner or on top of a bunker and like spew lanes of foam. If you want to run around with the blaster, the Rhino Fire, in my opinion, isn't really ideal. And as I complained about in the review, if you take out one of the magazines like to load it, it disables both magazines, included the loaded one, which is a huge design flaw in my opinion. It seems like the best benefit of having two magazines loaded so you can take one out, load it while the other one's still hot so you can still be shooting it or at least pointing at somebody to keep them like behind their bunker as you're loading. But the Rhino Fire disengages with an internal safety if you take out one of the magazines, so you can't do that. While it's super cool, it's a little bit more gimmicky. I don't really see a lot of Rhino Fire for that reason. If you really need that much firepower, it might be easier and more practical to run around with two hyper fires or two rapid strikes. And of course you have the added benefit of being able to shoot at two targets at once instead of just shooting at one target twice. But I guess it's great for anybody who says anything worth doing is worth overdoing. That is it for the flywheel elite blasters that I'm covering in this video. Infinis isn't out yet, bros. Don't even comment. Check the date of the video. It hasn't been released. I don't have it. Most popular comment out of every other series overview. You forgot that. Da -da -da -da. Don't look at the date of the upload. Anyways, onto the next section spring blasters that are like primary worthy. Worthy is a strong word since they're springers. Flywheel master race! <laughs> but I mean larger or more traditional. First up is the Spectre. Spectre is a small pistol sized blaster with a, a built-in five round cylinder. It's spring action and primed at the top with a, a traditional priming mech. And it has a stock attachment point and a barrel attachment point and it includes a pretty cool silencer and this really crappy folding stock. The folding stock is awful because it's way too flexible to use at all. As a primary, probably not worth it because it only has five rounds. But to put into a holster, you know, it's very similar to the strong arm or disruptor with one less dart. So yeah, I personally don't get why anybody would buy a Spectre, but people do, or well, people don't. I think it's discontinued. So maybe Hasbro saw that. Getting off topic, now to the Surge Fire. This one's relatively new. This has a 15 round built-in cylinder. It's spring powered, pump action, and also slam fire enabled. Although slam fire skips a lot and doesn't work very reliably or reliably at all. But for anybody who hates magazines and the Spectre just is kind of too low of capacity, the Surge Fire is more or less a step up from that. But if you like mags because you're awesome, like an operator, maybe the Retaliator is for you. Retaliator has been a state in our hobby way too long and before it it was the recon which has the same shell it is spring action primed on the top slide very traditional it has a barrel attachment point as well as a stock attachment point the included barrel has rails on the top and on the bottom and the priming grip also has a rail although if you put an optic up there it makes it a little harder to prime and this is fed through in strike magazines and the included magazine holds 12 darts that is the retaliator and if you like the retaliator and you like the principles but you want to go a little faster the rampage might be for you the rampage is very similar the drivetrains are actually almost interchangeable i believe spring powered, but this one is pump action and it also has slam fire so you can fire pretty fast. And unlike the surge fire, the rampage slam fire actually works. It's also magazine fed, but it has a horizontal magazine, which is really weird, but some people dig it. So I won't harp on that too much. And it includes a 25 round drum, but it's compatible with other in strike magazines as well. And if you're like, Hey, that's pretty cool. I like the pump action and slam fire, but that magazine, that's just silly. Maybe the alpha trooper is for you. Announcer boys activated. Maybe the elite alpha trooper is for you. If you call it an eat out loud, I will punch you in the face. An online acronym for Elite Alpha Trooper EAT. I heard somebody at the Nerf War, hey, nice EAT, bro. He wasn't even kidding. Like, <laughs> to type it, I totally understand because it's faster, but to say EAT, <laughs> like when I send a text, what's your ETA? <laughs> 
he calls me. What is Etta? <laughs> I'm getting too far off topic. The Elite Alpha Trooper, or I'm not gonna say it. The Elite Alpha Trooper comes in two variants, blue and orange, as well as like the non-elite or the yellow version. Out of the box, it may include different magazines, but it is fed through the InStrike magazine system, so it's compatible with all of them. Has a stock attachment point, so you can put on whatever stock you'd like. Keep in mind, the orange stock is the same as the Spectre stock, and that is also crap. It's just super flexible and garbage. But that orange they use for the Elite Alpha Trooper like XD, the orange version, is a really weird pigment of orange that doesn't match anything else. So you might be stuck with that, unless you wanna throw on like the Demolisher stock because it's gray. But the Elite Alpha Trooper is pump action and slam fire enabled just like the Rampage, but it has a vertical magazine, so it's not sticking out being weird horizontal-like. A more traditional blaster, very similar to the Retaliator, but instead of priming up at the top, it is pump action, so it's a little faster. If I had to use a spring blaster, I'd use the Elite Alpha Trooper, or a Retaliator with a worker pump grip, because that's a little bit more solid than the Elite Alpha Trooper internal priming bar. But now I'm getting too detailed because I use upgraded springers. And that is it for the spring-powered traditional primary style blasters. Now on to a few oddities. First, the Strata Bow, which is a spring-powered, technically, bow power blaster with a built-in clip system. Capacity of 15 rounds, and it's string-like fired, like a bow. It's not a tension band like the Crossbolt and some Rebel arrow launchers. There's an internal spring that the string is pulling back, sort of like how you prime back a springer. And that's activated when you pull back the string and then you let go and you fire it like a bow. This is a super weird blaster. I don't think people buy this one trying to buy like a battle-effective blaster. But it's certainly interesting as a plinker, and if you like bows and you're drawn to that weird stuff, then it would, might work for you to shoot at targets. But if you start shooting at people like me, I would freaking wreck you with a flywheel blaster, bro. Finger being a strife and just, yeah. It's a reason why our military doesn't use bows, bro. <laughs> But it's an interesting blaster anyways, and to a real bow, or sort of, the crossbolt. The crossbolt is band powered. It has an elastic band and that is to propulsion, which gives it a really weird sound when you fire it because it doesn't have like a spring launch or a flywheel rev. It just goes and it sounds cool. The crossbolt takes standard in-strike magazines and it includes a 12 round stick mag. It's primed with a pretty traditional style like handle up at the top, similar to the Retaliator, but with the bow arm sticking out in the elastic cord, it's, it's very not traditional, but they try to make it traditional, like taking magazines. If you think the Strata bow is really cool, but you know, that's not more practical, but you wanna have a weird bow style blaster, maybe the crossbolt is for you. <laughs> I personally hate it. This is one of the most uncomfortable grips Nerf has ever produced. After one magazine, I just wanna throw the blaster to the ground because it cramps my hand up. It is unbelievable. Unbelievably bad, that is. I just, I dislike everything about this blaster. So I'll just uh, leave it at that. Next, the Rough Cut. The Rough Cut is spring-powered, pump action, slam fire enabled, and it's fed through an eight-round front-loading barrel system. Every time you prime the Rough Cut, you've primed it to fire twice. So you can halfway pull the trigger and just fire one dart, then fully pull the trigger and fire both, or pull the trigger really fast and shoot out two at once. And because it's pretty small, you can tuck it away, like into a small backpack, like if you really need a shotgun-style blaster. So I think it has its place, but it's not really side arm worthy because it's a little too big so I don't see these on the field too often but it's still pretty cool. On to the next one which is definitely an oddity is the Thunder Blast. The Thunder Blast fires missiles just like the Demolisher missile launcher but it doesn't have like the Demolisher flywheel blaster attached to it it's just a missile launcher. These are the same missiles as the, as the Demolisher and the other rocket launchers like the Tri-Strike missile launcher and they fly relatively accurately. I mean they're not like laser beams but they don't fly all, all over the place so you can reasonably hit stuff. And missiles are freaking cool man. Some game types value them really highly so if you you hit a particular target or you can only destroy a barrier with a missile, darts don't do anything to it. You know, missile launchers can have their place depending on your game type. The Thunder Blast only has a capacity of one, but then you also have two in the back so you can reload a little bit faster. Definitely a fun blaster. It doesn't fit my play style and it's so big that, you know, I'd rather have a demolisher if I really needed a missile launcher because it's built into like a more primary worthy blaster instead of one giant missile launcher that, you know, is really big to carry on a sling. But for the right game type, you know, pretty cool blaster. Next, I just threw an odd of these because it didn't belong anywhere else, the Terra Scout. Terra Scout is a remote control tank with a built-in fully automatic magazine fed blaster. When you have a nightmare about robots killing you with nerf blasters, this is pretty much what you're thinking of. It's effectively a rapid strike glued to a remote control car. Yeah, get scared, bro. With a live feeding camera so the driver doesn't even have to see you, he can just look into his remote, drive it around remotely and shoot you. Because if the other parts of this blaster didn't scare you enough, Add that to it. If it had wings or if it was like a drone and it could fly, it would take over the world. That's a fact. But it's in a class of its own because the other blasters aren't also RC tanks. So I'll just 
leave that summary at that. Now on to the pistols or the non-primaries. First, the Fire Strike. Not too much to say about this one. This is the very baseline like pistols, pretty standard stuff. Carries one in the barrel and two right below the barrel for faster reloads. Spring powered, easy to prime, pretty traditional blaster. Next, the Strong Arm, which is definitely a go-to pistol or secondary. This is a six round spring power blaster primed at the top, very traditional. The strong Arm is also slam fired enabled, so you can blow those six darts pretty fast. And it comes in both blue and white, the XD version. The successor to the Strong Arm, more or less, is the Disruptor, which is very similar to the Strong Arm. The Disruptor cylinder does not pop out of the blaster, it just exposes more of the barrels in the front so you can reload without moving the cylinder out. Not really better or worse, but you know, simpler, maybe. And the capacity of the Disruptor is the same as the Strong Arm at six darts. Next, the Split Strike, which is kind of a weird blaster. This one carries four darts, but it's kind of two blasters, like, combined. Kind of like Two-Face, the Batman character, so when you feel like it, you can split them apart, hence the name Split Strike, and then have two blasters so you can fire, you know, like, four in a row at one target or break them apart and then engage two targets at the same time. Pretty cool concept, pretty gimmicky considering the size of the blaster. It's too big to reasonably fit into a holster and it doesn't have big enough capacity to really be a primary. But it's cool, I suppose, and if you're like, hmm, I only have enough money for one toy and I really want a transformer and also a nerf blaster, now you can buy both with one product. Transformers, robots in disguise. Flag for copyright infringement on the Transformers theme song. That's, that's how good I am at singing. I nailed that, note for note, bro. <laughs> I'm kidding, I can't sing. That's the only thing I cannot do in this world. The only thing. <laughs> Next, the Dual Strike. Now this is an Elite Blaster and a Mega Blaster, but since the Mega Blaster is sometimes under the Elite Blaster, is it still also an Elite Blaster all the time? I don't know. Capacity of three Elite Darts as well as three Mega Darts. You can only fire one at a time, so you prime it back and you get to fire fire one dart, but there's a, a lever on the side of the blaster which allows you to move from Elite or Mega, and each of them work on a, a smart AR system. It is a pretty cool system, and if you have a game type where you really need to shoot Elite darts and Mega darts, that could be really functional. I would gravitate towards like a Cyclone Shock or a Mega Secondary if I need to use that Mega Dart to destroy a target or something, and then whip out my Strife or an Elite Firing Primary for most of the time. Since the Dual Strike is a pistol in itself, you'd have to have that in a holster anyway, so it's not like, mm, I don't want to carry a holster blaster. Totally carry at Mega Sidearm as well as your Elite Primary if you wanted to. But different options, different strokes for different folks, that's the phrase, right? That is the Dual Strike. Now to the king of all blasters, Lay Jolt. <laughs> the Jolt has a capacity of one, it fires like all of the other springers. You just pull down the handle and fire. Very simple blaster. And the second jolt, or I'm sorry, the snap fire, which is a jolt reskin, and it works in pretty much the same way. And also the pocket strike, which is, I'm sorry, jolt slash pocket strike, yet another one. And pretty much the, the exact same blaster. And, oh, the three round jolt, or the, what we call the triad, is the same thing but with three barrels with a smart AR system. A surprise to see the triad's chrono average at 69 giggity feet per second compared to the jolt, snapfire, and pocket strike at 55, 58, and 57, respectively. Those other three are way down there, and the triad, with higher capacity, shoots up to the elite par at, you know, about 70 FPS, so. Impressive, the triad kind of surprised me. It is just a Jolt reskin, but an upgraded reskin. That is a summary of all of the Nerf Blasters in the Elite series that I reasonably put into my list. Hey, Coops, you forgot the Infinite. Coops, you forgot this one, this one. What about the Elite long shot? I know everybody doesn't type like that, but when I read silly comments, that, that's how I read them. So let me rephrase that. That is my list of the Elite series overview. That's the summary of all of the blasters. Now to a very extended firing demo. Timestamp will be in one of the corners for the end of the firing if you just want to get to my top picks list. Super long firing demo of all of the Elite Blasters. Go, go.
Double try it. Oh, come on. Look at the third time that'll be the charm for a triad. Take three. That was the firing demo of all of the Elite Blasters. Thanks for sitting around. Or if you just click the timestamp, then you just jumped right here and you didn't wait at all. But neither did I, because that was like 30 seconds ago. Time travel and video editing, how does it work? <laughs> now to Coop's top picks within the Elite series. Which ones would I recommend, or more accurately, which ones are my favorites? In no particular order, because they're just different classes, I wouldn't say one is better than the other except if it's flywheel, and then it's clearly superior. <laughs> First, top pick, again in no particular order, Lay Rapid Strike. If you want a full auto blaster, the Rapid Strike is fantastic. Very traditional ergonomics, you know, full auto, flywheel master race, magazine fed, has all the rail space that you could possibly want for all of your awesome tactics. However, if we're looking outside of the Elite series, the Regulator is very similar, but also has Select Fire, which gives you the benefit of not blowing all your load super fast in full auto only, because that Select Fire allows you to go semi-auto. Regulator wasn't covered because Modulus is separate from the Elite series, not a sub-series. But the Rapid Strike within the Elite Focus is still a top pick, and it's been great a great blaster for many years now. Next up, Lay Strife, my favorite nerf blaster probably, you know, of all time. You can put on whatever stock, barrel, attachments you want. It's pretty awesome. Pretty low cost, so you're not buying like more blaster than you need, like with a Rapid Strike. Or more accurately than the Retaliator, because the Retaliator is about the same profile, but you have to buy the barrel and the stock. And if you don't like that barrel and the stock, you're paying money for parts that you don't really want. So the Strife lets you go in at the lowest cost and then put on whatever attachments you want, which is pretty cool. Flywheel Master Race Performance. Um, bear in mind, I usually rave about flywheels after modification in unmodified form. They do bog down and, you know, maybe not as much fun. So look into basic wiring and throwing in some IMRs or something like that if you want that awesome performance. That is the Strife, my second top pick. My third top pick within the spring category, if you're asking, the Elite Alpha Trooper or the EAT. I'm just kidding. Oh, I can't even, it hurts to say it like I'm cringing internally. <laughs> okay, now I've kept my word. I'll punch you in the face if you say it. <laughs> If you call it an eat out loud, I will punch you in the face. The Elite Alpha Trooper is definitely a battle effective spring power blaster. You know, it has magazine, it has very traditional ergonomics. It, you can whip it around fast, slam fire enabled, throw in an upgraded spring from like Orange Mod Works, and you, you have a pretty battle effective blaster, especially. So if you're going for your primary um, after you've been EMP'd, the Alpha Trooper is the go-to. Next top pick, the Disruptor. And this is over the strong arm because lately I've been really digging the prime action on the Disruptor. It just feels smoother to me. I don't know if I've broken my strong arms or worn them out since they're a little old. I wouldn't say it's substantially better than the strong arm, but I'm gravitating towards it right now, and that's what I like to use. And lastly, the Terra Scout. Now this one, you know, is definitely in a class of its own because there aren't really any competitors, but in the right role, the Terra Scout is fantastic. It works really well. Just recently reviewed the reskin version, the black one, which is also pretty cool. It's on my top picks list, but it's not something I'd recommend unless I know a whole lot about how you approach this hobby and how easily you throw money away. <laughs> That's it for my top picks, a few honorable mentions. The Rough Cut, the Thunder Blast, and the Triad. A triad for that emergency roll, because that, you know, around 70 FPS par. Obviously not primary worthy blaster, but it's a pretty solid emergency blaster. Thunder Blast, because it's super fun. Um, I wouldn't really use it, but it's so cool, and it works well. And the Rough Cut, because it's good at what it tries to do, and I have seen people use them effectively, and if you want a blaster to integrate into something else, it's a great one. But like the Triad and the Thunder Blast, the, the Rough Cut doesn't really fit my play style or any of my traditional loadouts. I just like traditional stuff you know, a, a standard primary, like an Alpha Trooper or a Strife with a few attachments, maybe a Rapid Strike, throw a Disruptor in a holster, call it a day, then load the rest of my, my real estate, like my gear space with magazines and ammo. What more could you need? And that, that is it for my outline of this video. That was a super long video, wasn't it? Thanks so much for sticking around. That was my series overview for the Elite series. A little different format than all of my other series overview because there are so many effing blasters in this series. But you guys have been asking for it, perhaps jokingly. I can't really read the tone in those comments, but um, there it is. Hopefully the table of contents helped you this far. Probably should have mentioned that in the beginning of the video. BT Dubs, table of contents in the description of this video. Boom, that is a series overview. If you guys have any requests for other series overviews or or overall just like class overviews. I have a few planned and I'd like to do a few more of these. But if you guys have any requests, leave a comment in the section below. That concludes this video. Thanks so much for watching, bros. And as always, stay tactical. These series lines, series is, series. 
Siri, shut the phone. <laughs> okay, my Siri, or my phone just, okay. Would you not go to sleep for like one video, please? <laughs> okay, back to it.